All right, so we're on um, solving linear systems by substitution. Substitution means that we're plugging one thing in for another, right? Equivalent statements in for each other or equivalent expressions in for each other. What we're going to be doing is the following steps. So when solving by substitution, um, step one is that we want to solve one equation for one of the variables. So that we want to isolate a variable. Key thing here, step one is to isolate variable. And it's just once one of them. So essentially that's all it's saying is that we're going to isolate a variable. Is that grammatically correct? No, but we're going to roll with it. So I forgot the word A. Step two is to substitute the expression for the first variable. So step two is our first step of substitution. Step three, we're going to substitute again. But this time it's back into the original. And then step four is always to check. Check yourself, okay? So again, our four, our four steps are easy. We isolate, we substitute, substitute, and check. Isolate, substitute, substitute, in, check. That's it. Those are your four steps. Sound doable? Are ready to follow the four steps? Sometimes it's better to see them out in action or you make a decision on whether it's terrible. All right? Here we go. So our first example that we have, so you're going to write down on your paper, number one, we're doing 4x plus 3y equals 10, and x plus 2y equals 10. And this is a system because I'm given two equations, and I'm trying to find what x and y value make both of them true. So step one says I need to isolate. I need to decide which one of these expressions do I want to isolate one of my variables in. Usually you want to choose the one that has a variable with a leading coefficient of one. Okay. So notice here we have Casper the friendly one. Because even though nothing's there, what's always there? A one. So the one that has a leading, co well, variable coefficient, a variable with a coefficient of one would be one X plus two one. So I'm going to use that one to isolate. So I have x plus 2y equals 10. My goal here is to get x by itself. That's what isolating means. What can I do to get x by itself? Subtract what? I can subtract x or subtract, I want to get x by itself. So I need to move things away from it, right? If my goal is to isolate x, who needs to go? The 2y. So what do I need to do? Subtract 2y. So I'm subtracting 2y, which is going to lead me to x equals 10 minus 2y. That's what it means to isolate. Okay, I need to isolate one of the variables. All right, step two, that is our first, first stage of substituting. This is where we're going to sub, sub in. So what we got here for x equals 10 minus 2y, we're going to substitute it into the other equation. So we have 4x plus 3y equals 10 remaining. Where x is, we're going to substitute in x equals 10 minus 2y. So it becomes 4 times 10 minus 2y plus 3y equals 10. So this is our first sub. How do we feel about the first sub? We isolate it. Now we are subbing. Now that I have subbed in, instead of solving for two variables, all I'm doing now is solving for one variable. So I'm going to distribute, combine, isolate the y. Distribute, combine, isolate. Okay, so we're going to distribute. You get a 4, you get a 4. That leaves us with 40 minus 8y plus 3y equals 10. After we distribute, then we're going to combine. So we have negative 8y plus 3y, and that's going to lead us to negative 5. So we have 40 minus 5y equals 
10. Now we're going to isolate. So we need to get y by itself. What do I need to do to get y by itself? Minus 40, and then what am I going to do? And divide by negative 5. Does that make sense? So y is now by itself. I've taken out all the things that annoy it. So we get y equals, what's 10 minus 40? Negative 30. Negative 30 divided by negative 5. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. And 30 divided by 5 is 6. So now we have our value y equals 6. So now we know the value of y. How do we feel about our first sub? Okay, now we're going to do our second sub. Calling in another sub. So our next sub is that now we know the value of y, correct? So we're going to sub that back into step one. So this is where you go back to step number one, and you're going to substitute in the value of y. Step one, we, we had x equals 10 minus 2y. But now we know the value of y. And what is the value of y? 6. So therefore, x equals 10 minus 12, which is what? Negative 2. So in conclusion, step 4, our solution set is negative 2, 6. That's our solution. That's because x equals negative 2 and y equals 6. So we're just going to do a quick out loud check. Are we okay with that? The step 4 is take your problem and check it. Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to plug negative 2 in for x, 6 in for y, and we're going to do it verbally. Cool? What is 4 times negative 2? Negative 8. What is 3 times 6? 18. Negative 8 plus 18, does that equal 10? Yes. Check so far, right? Now we're going to do the next one. Negative 2 plus 2 times 6 is 12. And then negative 2 plus 12 is 10. Did we do it right? Yes, we checked right. So this is our final solution. Okay, so we isolate, sub, sub, check. Isolate, sub, sub, check. Yeah? Okay, we're going to do one more together, and then you're going to fly, little birds. Got it? All right, here we go. Let's try this one. So we have x minus 2y equals 5. That's our system. I don't know where my little fancy brace is, but we're going to roll with that one. And we have 4x plus 3y equals 9. So step one is to decide which one should we use to isolate. The top one. Why the top one? There we go. We get x has a coefficient of one. It's going to be easy to get by itself. Make sense? So step one, I'm going to get x by itself. So we have x minus two y equals five. What do I need to do to get x by itself? Add two y. So when we add two y, we're left with x equals five plus two y. You have a step one. Step two is our first round of substitution. And if you feel confident in what you're doing, this is your opportunity to work ahead. Okay. You don't have to keep up with my pace. You can work ahead. All right. So now I'm going to substitute. So that means I'm using the untouched equation, right? The second one. And I'm going to substitute in for x, right? So I'm substituting in for my x because that's what I isolated, correct? 
So when I substitute it for x, we get 4 times 5 plus 2y plus 3y equals 9. After we substitute, we distribute, combine, isolate. Distribute, combine, isolate, okay? So we're going to distribute the 4, and it gives us 20 plus 8y plus 3y equals 9. After we distribute, then we're going to combine 20 plus 11y equals 9. Now we're going to isolate. What are the two steps I have to take to get y by itself? Subtract 20. Perfect. And then do what? Divide by 11. Oh, 11y. 11 so therefore, y equals 9 minus 20 is what? You owe me, you have $9 and you spend 20. What's left of your rent account? Negative 11. So negative 11 divided by 11 equals negative 1. So now we know the value of y. So now up is our second substitution. So third is now we know y equals negative 1. And we're going to substitute it back into step number 1. So x equals 5 plus 2 times negative 1. x equals 5 minus 2. Therefore, x equals what? 3. So step 4 is what is our solution, and we check. So our solution, what is our x value? What's our y value? Negative one. And you can write out your check or you can mentally check, right? So if I'm mentally checking, I'm going to go back to the original system. And I'm going to plug in what I know. I have X is three. Y is negative one. So three minus two times negative one, which is plus three plus two is five. Is that true? Check. Next one. Four times three is 12. Three times negative one is negative three. 12 minus 3, is that 9? Yes. I'm a genius. I did it. All right? Guess whose turn it is, and we need to stop talking. If you said you, you are so correct. Here you go. You have 7x minus 3y equals negative 1. x plus 2y equals 12. I want you to either work independently and then check with your group mates or work as a group to find the values of x and why? All right. Ready, set, go be great. Here we go. So which one was the one we isolated? The second one. Why was it the second one? The X is almost by itself, right? Single step. Okay. Now, fun fact, you can isolate anyone. It's just what, how hard of a problem you want it to be. Does that make sense? All right, so isolating x, we would be left with x equals 12 minus 2y, yes? After we have that, we then are going to substitute it into the other, the other one, right? So we have 7 times 12 minus 2y minus 3y equals negative 1. Yes, still good? Okay, now we're going to distribute, combine, isolate, DCI. Distribute, combine, isolate. All right, so we distribute, distribute. And we get 84 minus 14y minus 3y equals negative 1. Still good? Now we're going to combine. So we have 84 minus 17y equals negative 1. Okay, now we're going to isolate. So we need to isolate the y. What are the two steps to get y by itself? Subtract 84 and... Divide by negative 17. Subtract 84, divide by negative 17. So we get y equals negative 85 divided by negative 17. If you made a mistake, do you see it? Anyone? Are we good? 
All right, what's negative 85 divided by negative 15? Five. A negative divided by negative is a positive. And we get y equals five. All right, step three is we substitute back into step number one. So where there's a y, we now can put a five, right? So x equals 12 minus two times five, which gives us 12 minus 10, which is two. So x equals two. So step four is what is your solution? And to check it. So our solution set is two comma five. And now you're going to do your verbal check or your plug in on paper, however you want to do it. Seven times two is 14. Three times five is 14 minus five is check. Next one, two plus two times five is 10. Two plus 10 is 12. So what does that mean? We're geniuses. We did it. Woo. All right. 40.2. How do you feel? Good? All right. Um, 